Nuclear fusion is a process that was discovered in the early 20th century, and experiments were first conducted in the 1930s in Cambridge, but were unsuccessful and largely mocked by the science community. After World War II and the success of nuclear fission bombs, nuclear fusion research was restarted, but with a new focus of warfare. The process of nuclear fusion involves joining hydrogen nuclei together to form an end result of a helium nucleus. This process involves the release of a huge amount of energy, so it can be very destructive. A hydrogen bomb is thousands of times more powerful than an atomic bomb. The total number of explosions in World War II was only one-fifth of the power of one hydrogen bomb. During the hydrogen bomb's creation in the top-secret Manhattan Project, scientists first recognised that nuclear fusion was a mechanism used by stars to generate their energy. The process begins with two hydrogen nuclei, which are each made up of one proton, that join together to form a deuterium nucleus, a positron and a neutrino. A positron is the antiparticle of the electron, so it has a charge of plus one and will annihilate an electron if they're collided together. As you can see, the positron is needed to conserve the charge of the nuclear equation. The deuterium nucleus fuses with another proton to form a helium-3 nucleus. Two of these helium-3 nuclei fuse to form a helium-4 nucleus and two more protons. If we compare the mass of four protons with the mass of the helium nucleus, we can see that they don't match. Four hydrogen nuclei have a mass of 6.692 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, and the mass of one helium nucleus is 6.645 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. The difference is 0.047 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. A tiny bit of mass has been lost, but surely this breaks the laws of physics. Mass can't just start disappearing around the universe, or would get into all sorts of trouble. One day, your whole left arm might suddenly disappear, or maybe you just suddenly not exist. As we know this isn't the case, the lost mass must be explained. And a certain scientist called Albert Einstein managed to do this. He introduced probably the most famous equation of all time, E equals mc squared. The E in the equation stands for energy, m is for mass, and c is the speed of light. This equation tells us that the difference in mass between the four protons and the end helium nucleus is converted into energy and released. We know the speed of light is very big, so squaring this will give an extremely large number. Therefore, a tiny amount of mass multiplied by c squared will give an enormous amount of energy. In fact, if one kilogram of hydrogen was converted to helium by nuclear fusion, the energy produced would be the same as burning 20,000 tons of coal in a power station. An important note to make is that nuclear fusion is not the same as nuclear fission. They are different processes. As we've said, fusion involves the fusing or joining of hydrogen nuclei into helium nuclei, so it involves joining lighter nuclei into heavier nuclei. Fission is almost the opposite, where heavier nuclei split to form lighter nuclei. All light nuclei up to iron can join to make heavier nuclei via nuclear fusion. However, elements heavier than iron will undergo fission instead. So, now that we know about nuclear fusion, we can see what happens next in a star. Once fusion starts, the star is no longer known as a protostar, but is called a main sequence star. A particular main sequence star is a red dwarf star. This is the most common of all stars, and is very dim with a very low mass. It transports energy from its core to the surface by convection alone. For a medium-sized star, like the Sun, the energy released from the core, where most of the fusion takes place, is typically transported outwards by photons via radiation, through the radiative zone. The energy is transported further through the convective zone by convection to the surface. When the energy reaches the surface, which is called the photosphere, it is radiated out into space, enabling us to see it from Earth. In this way, we can see a star shining. The energy that travels from the core to the star's surface gives surrounding atoms more kinetic energy. The atoms start moving away from the star's centre, causing the star to expand, 
and creating an outward radiation pressure. This acts against the pull of the gravity, and for most of the star's life, the two are balanced. The star lives like this for millions or billions of years, depending on its size. What happens next depends on the initial size of the star at the start of its life, 